The thing that I want to talk about today is just about how it's pretty hard to code things on your own or to work on a project by yourself. This has been a question that I've been getting a lot on my live streams recently, as well as some comments that I've been getting on the page. So what exactly do you do to start a project? How do you know that you're doing a project that would be good for the future to 100% give you the certainty that you're going to be a better engineer? The truth is that... Hey guys, it is October 20th and it is 6.34 p.m. It is a Friday, which means that I have time to code all day long and I do not have to worry about work deadlines um, or waking up early. So Fridays are usually a really good day for me to work and hopefully I'll get a lot done. Um, I usually try to plan out what I'm going to do. This time I am still working on that blasted modal sheet and hopefully we can get it done. Yesterday I didn't have a good time. I wasn't as clear focused on my goals and I ended up kind of just wasting a lot of time doing something that I didn't need to do for my project. It did end up being a learning moment so I am happy that I did it but I definitely could have gotten a lot closer to finishing my minimum viable product or my app in general. So hopefully it'll go a lot smoother. I'm definitely going to do a little bit more planning before I start coding. And that way I could be a little bit more efficient and finish up the app so that we can get it on the app store. All right, let's get started. Today, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. We are going to be starting in our notion today. I have a timeline log for all the things that I feel like I need to write for the project. I was a little bit lagging behind, uh, definitely wasn't using it enough, but more recently I needed to have a place to write down everything and to get used to a lot of the different things that go through my mind because sometimes the coding logic can be a little bit complicated. So this time I'm going to make sure that I don't procrastinate. I know exactly which direction I'm going to go in and I'm going to go ahead and write down <laughs> instead of the next two things I'm going to do, I'm going to try to write down the next five things maybe and that way I never run out of things to do. So the first thing that I want to do is I just want to go to Figma. I also want to see what I was recently working on and figure out what exactly I left off with yesterday and what I have to do to finish this off. So first thing off the bat, notice that I have the turn on day button to do. So we'll write that down and maybe it'll be good to also have an order that way. If something needs to be a higher priority, we can move it towards the top. See, it's times like this where I'm glad I mapped things out because it turns out that these are the only things left in my task list. And honestly, it's not that much. It's mostly four things. I mean, granted, I'm probably not going to finish it today, but in a world where I am a genius and I somehow finish these four tasks, I have actually no idea what I'm going to do after this. I haven't even decided what I'm going to do in terms of the rest of the sheet. So yeah, let me take some time and try to decide what I want to do after this. I feel like in times like this, it is a blessing that I decided to have a milestone for everything that I'm doing. And yes, they are not up to date, but it allows me to see what I want to do next. So um have some leftover tasks here but the thing to do after would be the blocked and current app list so that gave me a little bit of direction and now i can find the ui mocks and see exactly what i need to do awesome okay so i think i know exactly what i'm going to do after this i think what i want to do is i want to finalize the ui mocks for the blocking app page modal sheet it is a modal sheet for now i don't know if this should be its whole like a whole new page or if it should be a sheet like this but let me know what you think in the comments 
Um, right now I have it as a pull-up sheet, but maybe it would be better to cover the entire screen now that I'm thinking about it. I also need to finalize the color and UI of the work mode main page. All right, that seems like it's good enough for now. So definitely now I'm definitely not going to get these all through today, even if I am a genius. So I should be good to go. And yeah, let's get started. Hey guys, so you already know the deal. Future Jomer here talking about how this session went and any pieces of advice or tips that I have for you that I learned from this session. So there's definitely a lot that lingered on from yesterday and also leaked into today. So I'm really happy that my habit of saying that I'm going to start a task list and then doing it actually went into the next day. The thing that I want to talk about today is just about how it's pretty hard to code things on your own or to work on a project by yourself. This has been a question that I've been getting a lot on my live streams recently, as well as some comments that I've been getting on the page. So what exactly do you do to start a project? How do you know that you're doing a project that would be good for the future to 100% give you the certainty that you're going to be a better engineer. The truth is that it really doesn't matter what your project is. It just matters that you like it and that you like it enough that you come back the next day to work on it. The biggest thing about any project is consistency and with consistency comes the experience of learning from debug failures or errors or learning new concepts that have to do with specific frameworks or languages. And so simply the only thing to do in order to be a better coder, a better engineer is to just go out and do it. And usually it's never enough to just pick any project and just do it. It's the reason why people get really bored after they make things like a calculator or a ping pong game. It just doesn't incite people to be passionate. So what I told people in stream as well as the advice that I generally give is to find these projects, just go through your normal life. And when you see something that you wish there was a solution for, one, you should try to search it up to see if it already exists. And if it does, then it'll be super easy for you and you won't have to code it. But if it doesn't exist, then just go out and make it. The other thing that comes with doing projects by yourself outside of the struggle to be consistent is the feelings of being lonely, which is totally normal for every single person that's in computer science. You are literally in a room by yourself and sometimes you get a little bit of communication between other coders or other computer scientists, but for the most part, you are in your cave just coding away. And in times like this, I feel like one of the best ways that I found to make things less lonely is to share your work. Whether it's through Twitter or now X as they call it, or YouTube, or really anything, sharing your work can be a good way to talk to other developers as well as feel like you're not just coding by yourself in a room. The point of creating whatever project you're making is to put it out into the world for the public to see or to use. And yes, of course, for you to use by yourself, but we wouldn't be software engineers or coders if we were just trying to make things that were only going to be individually used by one person. And so the thing to take away from all this is the act of coding itself is lonely but the things that surround coding aren't lonely at all there are so many things that we have to do in order to code a good application or a good piece of software and lots of times that process isn't lonely lots of times we'll have to talk to peers lots of times we'll have to talk to other people on the internet to find answers and when you look at things from this perspective it just makes developing a lot less lonely and allows you to feel like it's a lot more collaborative. 
Also, speaking of collaboration, I currently need some help with UI designs. If anyone knows any documentation uh, or any good resources for learning the modern concepts for designing an app, that would be great. I've recently been having issues with figuring out what exactly I need to put in or where exactly I need to put elements at for them to look like modern apps and also to keep up with current trends of what's being done in the market. So I definitely need a lot of help, um, but other than that, I'm probably just going to look up a lot of references online. I've been actually looking at apps on my phone and it just seems a little bit inefficient to try and find things just on my phone that are somewhat related. So I know there are resources out there, I'm gonna try to look for those and hopefully I can just improve myself on the front end as well. I'm definitely a lot more of a back end and optimizing type of engineer, but designing is just as important. So I definitely want to make sure that I am good to go on that front as well. Overall, this entire session was about a seven out of 10. It felt pretty good. And I just wish that I could have done more. I've gotten used to a lot of the Flutter framework as well as coding in Dart. So that part seems to be pretty good. I'm definitely getting better at a lot of the small nuances, like understanding how widgets work and the most common widgets like rows and columns, but there's definitely still a lot to learn, a lot to be more seasoned and to be able to code things a lot faster. I have started to get epiphanies on or naturally understanding when I should be coding things, but I want that to be more frequent. But yeah, that's enough of my ranting. Hopefully you learned something new and enjoy the rest of the time lapse. I will see you guys in a little bit. All right, we are at the end of the session and I just wanna go over with you guys what exactly I did. So. <laughs> to be honest, I spent about two hours out of the four hour study session or work session or code session, however you want to see it, to look at a bunch of issues. I learned about how to use the widget inspector and it's pretty cool just because I changed it so now it comes out into a web browser like this and there's definitely just a lot more space. Um, it doesn't get congested in the VS Code UI. So I'm pretty happy that I have a platform now to debug properly. So I feel like that time was worth it. I spent another hour trying to figure out a constraints issue, which just means that certain UI didn't fit into the um, constraints of whatever, the phone or the desktop screen. And I was trying to play around with it, ended up figuring out the issue. Um, turns out that if you have a column, it has an undefined height and you can set a sized box in order to have the height be specific to the box. But the reason I don't want this in general is because I have way too many columns and rows and it may be good common practice, but honestly, if I'm not using the expand or flexible widget wrappers, then I don't really need it, um, which I can go into in a different video. Feel free to let me know. But yeah, so outside of debugging and outside of playing around and learning more about Flutter, uh, in terms of actual progress, we finished the day schedule modal sheet. So that's a big win. Um, it looks beautiful. I spent some time um, trying to change the row height. I feel like this height needs to be a little bit bigger, but when I had it as the same size as these two rows, it honestly looked a little bit too big. And so I don't know what to think about it, but maybe I will change it in a UI review. Um, for now, 
this isn't completely done because in unactivating a row should also remove the text string for the time so that people don't get confused and know exactly what it's for. Um, I also just found another bug where the toggle button by default is not linked up to um, the preference value uh, that I set up or the boolean preference value that I set up so that needs to be fixed. Hopefully I'll look back at this video and realize that I have to fix it or remember it tomorrow. But super happy about that. We also looked into the logic for having an incorrect time range. So now if you press done, a little notification will pop up and I finalized the string so it looks really neat and tells the user exactly what's going on. If you swipe down, uh, the same thing happens and I was trying to play around with it to have that string be on one line but it was kind of hard to make this concise and have it be on one line without being explanatory so hopefully that's enough hopefully it doesn't look too bad uh, being on two lines but but overall I think I'm pretty happy with this and yeah sooner or later um, we'll do some finishing touches here and then we are moving on to the next piece of UI, which will be the modal sheet or the page that blocks applications. So I think that'll be super, super fun. But yeah, that's pretty much it. It is 1057, October 20th, and we are done with our session. It has been about four hours and a half. Pretty good session again. It's 11, so gonna Rest up for about an hour and tackle um, some more code tomorrow, tomorrow Saturday. So uh, there's going to be a lot of time to do a lot of things. Hopefully I get a lot of progress done. Going to try to work as much as I can. But if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Subscribe for some more content and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.